Hi, everyone. I am hoping this vlog finds you getting ready for a great weekend. Uh, depending on how quickly I turned it around for you, I'm hoping that I get it to you tonight, not tomorrow morning, but it could be Saturday by now. I wanted to vlog a little bit about um, something that happened this week that was very cool for me. Um, with COVID, I have not been making my way into classrooms all that much. We've really been trying to respect the space of teachers and know that, that we're all trying to keep kids healthy and safe and grown-ups healthy and safe. And so I haven't gotten a chance to really be out and about as much as I would have liked to, especially in my first year here. But on Wednesday of the week, I got to go and be one of the community readers in classrooms. And that was just a wonderful thing for me to be able to do. I was in Miss Ackerman's classroom, um, a first grade classroom over at Swallow Union. Hi, everybody. I hope you got a chance to watch. I reminded them that, told them I was going to do this and hoped that um, their grownups would watch and be able to share with them. So it was wonderful. They were so welcoming. Um, they actually asked me if I was going to come back on Thursday, too, which was really great. And, you know, sometimes I like to do story time and I've read a couple of books so far this year. I talked about um, what do you do with a problem? And I talked about, I read to you, uh, Mabel, Mabel One and Only. Um, and today what I would like to do is repeat my read out loud. This book was selected actually by the group that is in charge of the community reading here in, in Groton. I guess this happens each year at Swallow. It may happen at Florence Roach too, I'm not 100% sure, but I will also show you on the inside. These are all of the people that have read this book. And it has a sticker, this, this book is for Community Reading Day, Groton Dunstable Alliance for Youth and Parent Teacher Organizations. And all of the people got to sign it in the front, so I'm going to most definitely do that and sign my signature in. But I wanted to read it out loud so that you others could enjoy the story of Stan Tall, Molly Lumellen. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the yardsticks work that I vlogged about last Time And, you know, we talked about developmentally appropriate uh, ways to talk with kids and to understand where they are developmentally. Yeah, and, and one of the ways that you can really do that is, is through storytelling um, and using books to talk about a message. Um, I think this is really appropriate and timely. And you'll see in this book, it talks a little bit about bullying and um, it doesn't name it as such but it certainly does maybe mirror some situations that kids find themselves in. And even if your child at home is a senior in high school, you know, you can read through the pages of the story and know that um, there's some applicable themes that really can go all the way through. And the thing that I like about this book the most is that I like that it the ending of it you're going to see brings brings the relationship between um, Molly Lumellen and one of the characters in the story all the way through uh, to the end in a, in a positive way. Um, and part of it is because Molly Lumellen has, has the power. She's taken power for herself and who she is. And I think that's a really good message for us to be sending to all of our students, no matter how old they are, um, that you shine in the way that you shine and you should let that light go because it's it's important for others to see how confident you are. And that's not always an easy thing to do. And we will certainly hope that we provide opportunities in Groton Dunstable for students to feel like they can do that. Um, and so I, I'm going to share the story with you. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about um, Ronald Durkin, who is in the story, who would be perceived as you, you might be thought of as somebody who's trying to bully Molly Lou Mellon. And we also want to think about you know, behavior has a reason. We've talked a lot about that in the vlogs, right? The behavior has a reason. And we're not always sure why kiddos behave the way that they do. But it's important to be thinking about not just Molly Lou Mellon, but when we're in school and we're talking with our kids about being kind and um, having growth mindset and having grit and perseverance um, and, and, and just showing those core values of our schools that we remember sometimes that's really hard for some kids. And there may be many reasons as to why that is. And so we need to think about supporting all of our, our students and our children to just um, understand what their strengths are and have confidence when they you know, show who they really wanna be. So without any further ado, Stan Tall, Molly Lumellen, I hope you enjoy. Molly Lou Mellon stood just taller than her dog, 
and was the shortest girl in the first grade. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, walk as proudly as you can and the world will look up to you. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon had buck teeth that stuck out so far she could stack pennies on them. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, smile big and the world will smile right alongside you. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon had a voice that sounded like a bullfrog being squeezed by a boa constrictor. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, sing out clear and strong and the world will cry tears of joy. So she did. My favorite picture, by the way. Molly Lou Mellon was often fumble fingered. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, believe in yourself and the world will believe in you too. So she did. Then Molly Lou Mellon moved to a new town. She had to say goodbye to her grandma and all her friends. And start in a new school. On the first day of school, Ronald Durkin called her Shrimpo in gym class. When the game started, Molly Lumellon caught the football, ran under the legs of Ronald Durkin, and scored a touchdown. And the children thought, wow, she's good. And Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the second day of school, Ronald Durkin called, Bucky, called her Bucky Tooth Beaver. Molly Lumellon took out her penny, stacked 10 high on her teeth, and smiled as big as day. All the children smiled with glee. And again, Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the third day of school, Ronald Durkin said, you sound like a sick duck, honk honk. Molly Lou Mellon sang out a quack so clear and so strong that it made Ronald Durkin somersault backwards, hit his head and have to go to the nurse. All the children cried with joy to be free of Ronald Durkin for the rest of the afternoon. And Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the fourth day of school, Ronald Durkin said that she'd made the snowflake all wrong. But Molly Lou Mellon opened up her paper and revealed the most beautiful snowflake of all. All the children oohed and odd, even Ronald. On the fifth day of school, Ronald Durkin brought Molly Lou Mellon a stacking penny for her tooth and smiled at her. That night, Molly Lou Mellon took out a pencil and a paper and wrote a letter to her grandma. Dear Grandma, I wanted to tell you that everything you told me was exactly right. Love, Molly Lou Mellon. And the first graders really loved this story. And one of the things that I really noticed is that at the parts where it felt like Molly Lou Mellon was being teased, they didn't laugh. You know, they identified that it it probably felt really lousy that, that uh, Ronald was calling her those names. And I'm going to tell you that Ronald probably felt pretty lousy too. Um, and I'm also going to say that the big message that I hope we all take away, no matter what age our kids are, what school age they are, whether they're in high school, whether they're in middle school, whether they're in elementary school or pre-K, they need someone in their life like Molly Lou Mellon's grandmother that are telling them, you know, stand tall, stand proud. You are unique. Um, you are I'm waving goodbye to somebody out the window. <laughs> you are and should be recognized for your talents. Um, kids need to hear that no matter how old they are and no matter what yardstick says they are developmentally. Um, the approach might look a little different, certainly. You may not sit your senior down and read your senior Molly Lou Mellon, but you know, the message that we're taking away from the story is that kids are resilient when they have adults that help them be resilient. And so I'm hoping that you find ways to do that for your kiddos when they stumble or when you just need to applaud them for, for doing some, some really great work.
I hope you have a wonderful weekend and you enjoyed Molly Lou Mellon and are able to apply it to the work that you're doing with your children, no matter what their age. See you soon. Bye-bye.